So I was chatting to someone the other day and they were asking me, how do they get to that place where they really know the neck? So where they don't have to think about it anymore, where they just know how all the notes fit together. I can put the hand anywhere on the neck and just be able to play without thinking about it. Now it is achievable, you can get there, um, but it's, it's, it's just going to take time, it takes practice, it takes effort. It's like, it's like any skill that you need to, to learn, that you need to develop. There are kind of four stages in learning any skill, in learning any technique. There is uh, what's called unconscious incompetence. So in this case, for example, it may be that you just don't know that there is such a thing as a, a scale or a pentatonic scale, so you, you're just unaware of it. And then the next stage is conscious incompetence, so that's where you know about these, these techniques, these scales, but you don't know how to play them yet. So that's uh, conscious incompetence. And then there's conscious competence, which is where you first learn the scale, you first learn the technique, but you're still having to, to think about it while you're applying it. So that could be, you know, uh, with some of the videos I've talked about, I've talked about learning the fragments and using those as mnemonics to learn the scales and how they fit together. So that's, that's an example of conscious competence where you're still having to think about it. And then the final stage is unconscious competence and that's where you just know something, you don't have to think about it. So it could be like... Uh, walking, for example, you don't think about how you put your legs on the ground when, you, when you're walking, how you move your body weight and things like that. And it's exactly the same with the guitar. You move beyond thinking about the fragments, they just fall away because they're, they're irrelevant to you because you just know where to put your hands on the neck. So moving from conscious com competence to unconscious competence takes time and it just takes hours of playing, basically, to, to get to that place. Now, there are a couple of uh, exercises that you can do that will help you sort of connect the dots between the different scale positions. And one of my favorites uses a technique called a slide. And I, I really like using a slide because, firstly, it automatically changes your position, your position on the neck, so you automatically move from one position to the next position when you use a slide. And the other nice thing about the slide is that it sounds good. So it's, it's, a, it's a useful, musical, expressive thing that you can do. It sounds a bit like a bend. So what I thought I'd do is put three or four exercises together in the video this week and uh, show you how I use slides to move around the neck. So let's zoom in and I'll go through that now. Okay, so let's start with what I mean by the slide technique. So all I'm doing here is I play a note and then I slide to the next note, just with the same finger, yeah? So I can slide up, or I can slide down, or I can use any other finger as well. So there's my third finger. And I tend to use these just like I'd use a bend. Or even, even I'd use them together, you know. So it's a useful little musical uh, embellishment. But what it does is it, it changes position, as you can see. So what I want you to do to start with is just pick two positions of the pentatonic scale. So I'm going to pick stay in A minor. So that's my first position. And then I'll pick the position just below. Yeah? And what I want you to do is just start with that first position and slide down, then slide up again. Yeah? And then on the next string. positions together. And then you can move on to the next position, you know, uh, and 
just work your way up the neck like that. And hopefully you'll start to connect these two positions together. It starts to become much more, you know, an unconscious connection between these two shapes. So that's the first exercise. The second exercise is around five note groupings. So what I want you to do is to just play four notes in one position and then slide for the fifth note. And then move across. Yeah. And as you can see that takes you all the way up the neck. And then see if you can come back down again. do this between all of the positions going up and down the neck. Nice thing about this one actually is if you look closely at the shapes the, the shapes are just repeated um, finger patterns because you're playing across octaves and you're playing five note groups and you're playing the pentatonic scale. So this pattern is exactly the same as this pattern. It's exactly the same as this pattern. Yeah. So that, that shows you sort of a symmetry within these pentatonic scale shapes. So that's, that's the second exercise. Third exercise is around playing in groups of three notes. And so what I do is I play two notes and then slide up for the third note. And then on the next string, Just see if you can make it all the way up the neck. Yeah, and then take it all the way back down again. And as you can see, that's taken me from the fifth fret all the way up to the twenty-second fret. So, so the thing to do here though is to start changing the key. So, in this case, I'm in my minor pentatonic. So we just change the position just here. So if I stay around the fifth fret. But playing B minor pentatonic, I use a different starting shape, and again, two notes and slide, two notes, slide, two notes, slide. And again, it takes me all the way up the neck, but this time I'm in B minor. And again, I change position, change key rather. I use a different position around the 5th fret, in this case I'd be in F, F major, or D minor. And again I'd work my way all the way up the neck and all the way down. So that's three note groupings. And then finally um, what I like to do is a little two note grouping. So it's a bit like the very first exercise, but we're using it to, to climb all the way up the neck. So what you do here is slide. see if you can make your way up the neck and this is a very much more a linear exercise and you can take this across the strings because as you can see I'm only covering two, three or four strings before I run out of frets. So, so we've got three or four or five different exercises there that are all around changing position and the more you do of this stuff the more you find that you can do it much more freely and that leads me to the, the final exercise, which is where we have some fun with it, which is where I just want you to freestyle. So... take it. You can take it wherever you want, but just see if you can use a slide and, and just keep the notes moving. Just see if you can change position all the time and just see how fluid you can get around the neck when you're using slides all the time. So this is really quite fun. So see how you get on with those. Some of those are trickier than others and obviously when you pick the speed up they start to get really tricky and you, you stop really thinking about the different positions, you're thinking much more about how the notes connect up and the sound of the notes and the intervals that you're working with. So it, it's a great way of moving from that conscious competence to unconscious competence state that uh, you're really aiming for. 
And then finally, obviously, slides, I think, sound good. That, so they're a great sort of musical gesture. They're a great way of, of just changing things up in, in the music that you're playing and, and giving you another, another tool for adding a bit more emotion to your playing. So I think they're really worth experimenting with in their own right. Anyway, that's it for this week, and we'll chat next time. Goodbye.